today I have a video showing you how to fix things when jump rings go awry. Troubleshooting or tips and tricks if you will. There's a few different issues that typically pop up. However, if you've not watched my video about how to open and close jump rings, you'll want to do that first. That one goes over the basic technique. Today's video is really just going to review how to fix issues. So you'll definitely want to watch the other one first. Um, but there's three main issues. But I will tell you, one of the things that you really need to be sure of is that you can see the join of the rings. So you need glasses, maybe. Depends on your eyesight. But really and truly, if you can't see the joins really well, uh, you're going to need some magnification of some sort. And that can be different than your average uh, prescription glasses. Sometimes people layer cheaters over or they have magnification that comes down, but uh, making jewelry is a little bit closer up than your typical reading glasses are made for. So you'll find that you need a little bit stronger prescription than normal. But today I'm going to show you about the three different scenarios that are most common that are an issue. And so here, just to uh, show you what we're going to cover, this first one, when you have a little gap, um, when the ring is closed, it's in alignment, um, both from the top and the bottom. However, there's a little gap there. And so we're going to want to close up that gap. The next major problem that I'm going to cover is what I call the taco. If you look at the profile of this ring, it's got a slight curve to it, almost like a Pringle potato chip or a taco shell. Um, in any case, it's no longer on a flat plane, and that's where the problem lies. And so, like if I look at the other side of it, the wire is actually curved at the bottom at that pivot point. And so I'm going to show you how to get that straightened. And then the third most common problem is that one side compresses more than the other. So you've got this side compressed in, or the other side stretched out one or the other. Um, either way, it's going to look the same. And so I'm going to show you the, how to fix that as well. So let's start with the one where we want to close up a gap. And so I want to make sure that I'm holding it really well. Same grip as always. What we need to do here is we need to actually open the ring. But when I open the ring, I want to push this right side so that it's a little bit closer to the left side while I'm opening it. So let's see if you can see that on film. When I'm opening it, I'm actually pushing that to the left. There we go. And so you see, if I look down at it, those ends are actually gonna bypass when I go to close it now. And so when I see when I go to close it, see how those ends bypass each other? Put my wrists back down so I can help stabilize. And I'm gonna bring them across from each other. And when those wires touch, that's when we have that little click sound. That's why the click is such a nice sound when you hear people talking about opening and closing jump rings well. Just going to adjust the spring there. So for the alignment, front to back when I look down at the top and so just a touch more there there we go so there we have the alignment at the top and then the alignment at the side and you'll notice that that space is now closed there's actually a little bit of tension at the ends of those wires so that's going to hold on really well now okay so that's one problem out of the way the next problem is the taco so let me just back out a little bit here. When you have the um, taco problem, typically what causes this is your wrists have a tendency to rotate. So that can happen for two reasons. One, you lifted your hands up off of a surface, and so therefore you, you have a tendency to kind of roll in. Sometimes it can be if you tried to look at, look at it closer and you brought it really close to your body and that can cause you to roll out like that. It could also happen where you're rolling in if the curve is going up instead of down. But in this case, just show you up close again and we'll look at it from the downward view. 
You see how if I'm just totally looking straight down the jaw of those pliers, the pliers, the line of the pliers, this gap right here, if I look at that on both pliers while they ha I have them holding the piece, I have a slight V. They don't make a straight line. And so what I want to do is I want to straighten that line. That's the jaw of the pliers. And I actually want to go even more than straight so that when the spring lets go, it will now be on a more flat plane. And so sometimes that can throw the alignment off. But that first thing was to flatten the plane of the ring. And so then once you adjust the um, ends to meet, now we have the alignment from the side and the alignment from the top. And even most importantly with this one, that it's a straight flat plane on that ring. Okay, so that's how we fix the taco. And then the last problem is that one where the ring goes out of round. We've got one side, the left side in this case is more compressed and the right side is more spread apart. So there's a couple things that you can do with this, but you know, in a 16 gauge jump ring like this, the wire is fairly stiff. So one of the ways that I like to do it is actually probably uh, frowned upon by some, but I like to just take some pressure. If you see that I've got pressure at the top of the ring and pressure at the bottom of the ring on the side that's more expanded. And I've got, I'm gonna back out just a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to take and see how my finger is in between the plier grasp there. And I wanna just lightly compress and I have to really control the plier. You don't wanna slip doing this. but you can just give it a really gentle, controlled little squeeze. Just a little bit and see how that spring comes back too. So you wanna, you've gotta do it so that when you let go, you don't wanna do too much because then you're just gonna make it squashed. But just, just enough to give it that hint back into round. Sometimes, let me just show you another way that that can be, um, fixed. I'll grab another ring here real quick. So in this for this one I will do my best to purposely make that happen. And so what happens is like my right hand is pulling up, my left hand is pushing down, so it's happened just a tiny bit, right? And so what I wanna do is I wanna do the opposite of what I just said where I'm pulling up with my left hand and pushing down with my right when I go to close it. Adjust for that spring. There we go. And so now we've got that alignment from the top. And we've now got good alignment from the side. See how the, the one on the right is no longer high or out of round. So those are my tips and tricks in order to help you um, to correct your rings and to be round or well, to avoid all of the pitfalls that can happen with the jump rings. And so in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can make a very simple chain adding some beads. It's, it's pretty easy, but there is a little bit of a technique to keep your beads alternated. Um, they could be these glass unicorn beads that I have on this piece here, or they could be any kind of a, a bead that the trick is with the beads is that they need to have an opening that is big enough to fit on the rings comfortably and move around. It could also be charms too. It'd be a very cute charm bracelet. Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks so much for watching our presentation. If you would like to continue learning how to make jewelry with Jennifer Hanscom, please subscribe to our channel. 
Our goal is to provide comprehensive project-based jewelry instruction with a focus on using hand tools and small equipment so you can enjoy making jewelry right from your home. If you would like more information, visit our website at www.jewelryclassesjen.com.